Hi guys and welcome to Escape Wheel Watch Reviews. My name is Steve and today we're going to be reviewing the Bernie T2526M. So I received this watch for free from the Bernie official website. I don't have to send the watch back, but you guys know the deal by now. That's not going to sway my review one way or the other. And if by the end of this video you find yourself wanting to pick one of these up, I'll be leaving their link down below. So be sure to check out their website. I'll also be leaving a link to their LA AliExpress store if this one ever gets listed there. Currently it's not listed for some reason. Um, so if this does pop up on AliExpress, I'll be leaving their link down below as well. The current retail price for this watch is $56 US on the canvas strap, or for an extra $5, you can opt for the titanium bracelet. More on that a little bit later. The watch is available in black or this really dark blue here uh, on a color match strap. And I think both of them look really good. You can get it with the Bernie logo and the Bernie shield that you see here, or you can get it with a sterile dial, which seems to be the more popular option as that one is currently sold out. The watch case and optional bracelet are made of titanium. I didn't see any mention of the grade of titanium. I can't imagine it's very high, and I can't imagine that it is, uh, you know, coated in scratch resistance or anything like that. Um, so just keep that in mind. The watch has a sapphire crystal, a push-pull crown, a snap-on case back, 50 meters of claimed water resistance, and it's powered by the Miyota 2S60 quartz movement, which is claimed to have a 10-year battery life. So this dial setup may look extremely similar to another watch that I'm sure many of you have had in the past. It's kind of the beginner automatic watch. It's the Seiko SNK series watches, um, but the case and the materials and pretty much everything else about it is different and uh, so I say we get right into all those details before we do do a quick wrist check for the day and I'm wearing my chronos I'll be leaving the link for this up in the corner so you can see the review of that still one of my favorite watches from last year I uh, absolutely love it all right let's get to the dimensions a diameter of 37 millimeters and a thickness of 8.6 millimeters 20 millimeter lug width lug tip to lug tip of 45.1 on the supplied canvas strap weighs 40 grams the watch head alone weighs 24 grams and on the bracelet it weighs 61 grams so obviously being made of titanium and being a smaller case this thing just kind of disappears on the wrist it's excellent it wears really good nice and thin a little bit of turn down to the lugs too I mean, it is, it's super comfortable. Um, you just don't even know that it's there. Even on the bracelet, it just kind of disappears on wrist. Um, but yeah, I think it looks really good. I think it wears really good. I'm gonna go outside right now and throw it on my wrist for you. And here we are on my seven and a half inch wrist. And as you can see, it wears pretty darn good. Uh, I, th I think the dimensions are really nice. I, I think it looks pretty good. Um, bracelet is not the best, we'll get to that later but it's super lightweight super thin a little bit of curvature to the lugs as well nice matte finish with just some uh, polished accents and I think it looks overall pretty darn good and popping out into some direct sunlight here you can see still very matte no shine to the case itself other than the polished bezel there and again I still think it looks pretty darn good getting some direct sun there you can see there's no anti-reflective coating on it and it does get a little bit lost there um, not not terrible but you definitely need some anti-reflective coating on this uh, a lot shinier than uh, regular crystals for some reason I, I don't really know why but um, that's just what I'm seeing so I uh, just thought I'd mention it but I think overall in general I think it looks pretty good and it's very legible I'd say we go throw this on some straps and we'll get back to this review and here we are on the included nylon strap titanium hardware which is nice to see and yeah it looks uh looks pretty good i do like that i think that color of the the nylon strap is really nice actually and two layers underneath the watch is no issue this thing is super slim it looks great and here we are on a suede strap and i think that looks good uh there's i mean super slim super lightweight it, it's just very comfortable um, yeah it's a great kind of everyday watch I mean you're just not gonna feel it on wrist and I know some people like that some people don't like it but yeah no no denying the uh, the comfort of this watch it's it's definitely one of the most comfortable watches I've had on and here we are on a black rubber strap from Riche and again I think that looks good the, the dial is dark enough blue that the black doesn't look bad on it 
Um, so yeah, it's kind of a strap monster, and yeah, I think it looks really good. What do you guys think about that? And here we are on a ribbed nylon strap. This is from CNS Watchbands, and I think it looks pretty good. It's kind of a dark grayish blue color. I believe it's lead gray. Um, I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, let's go back inside and let's get back to this review. Yeah, so let's talk about the case finishing. And the case finishing on this is pretty nice. You got a polished bezel around the outside. It's kind of got a, a rounded appearance to it. It's not a not a you know a simple slope bezel. And then the case itself is fully bead blasted, as you would kind of expect from titanium. Nice and satinized. It looks great. Uh, hides fingerprints, hides smudges and stuff like that. Definitely does not hide scratches, as you can see on the bottom here. I haven't scratched the case yet, but uh, I'm waiting for it to happen. I'm pretty gentle with my watches, so if you're a little bit rougher on this thing or buying this thing for a beater watch, it's going to pick up scratches. I don't think there's any coating on it or anything like that. Uh, the crown here is just a simple push-pull crown, unsigned. But it might be titanium. I, I can't really tell. It just looks, it doesn't look like steel. Um, but yeah, I think it's tucked in there nicely. Bottom of the lugs, again, satinized. Bottom of the case, the case back here is just a snap-on case back. So if you want to take it off, you got to get a little blade underneath this little section right there and pop off the case back. Uh, just a satin case back, but nicely rounded, no sharp edges or anything like that. It's a very comfortable watch to wear. Kind of have your spec sheet around the outside there. I think it looks good. I think it looks really good. And uh, yeah, I like it. All right, so let's talk about the crystal. Let's test it for a sapphire. See there, I'm getting a positive reading for a sapphire. So that is nice to see that it is a sapphire crystal, especially at this price point. It's not something you usually see in a $50 watch. So very happy with that. They say it has anti-reflective coating. I am not seeing it at all. Um, if it does have AR coating, it's a very minimal AR coating. Uh, it's not, a, not an issue, really. Uh, you know, legibility on these fleegers with... You know, a dark background with white hands, white uh, white printing. It's, it's never an issue to be able to read this thing. So uh, whether it has it on there or not, I think it's a, a moot point. Um, it's, it's fine. It doesn't bother me at all, especially at this price point. All right, so let's talk about the dial on this thing. And the dial is really nicely done. It's a matte blue or matte black, depending on which color you get. It looks really good. This dark blue, I mean, it is very dark blue. I was uh, wondering what color I got when I first opened it. Um, the, the strap gave it away, but I mean, it's a really dark blue. Um, I think it looks pretty good. I, I think maybe a little bit lighter of a color would have made it, you know, pop just a little bit more, but, um, you know, that's, that's kind of a personal preference thing. I think it looks good either way. You have white printing all throughout the dial, no applied anything on the dial here. You do have a small date window at the three o'clock. I think they could have gone away with that one. Uh, it doesn't bother me that it's there but uh, it's definitely there. The handset on this, perfectly sized. You got that hour hand reaching right out to the hour ring, and then the minute hand reaching right out. That second hand stops a little bit short of the minute track, but not bad. And as we watch that second hand kind of tick around the dial, you can see that it actually, uh, it's pretty close to hitting all these markers. It's just a little bit off. Not, not bad at all. That's uh, Kind of surprising. Um, and it's pretty consistent all the way through. So it seems to me that the movement is a pretty solid movement. Um, yeah, but overall, I think it's done pretty nicely. I see no issues with the printing. Nice white hands. Uh, red tip to that second hand. It looks really cool. It says quartz and titanium on the dial. Like I mentioned earlier, you can get this with the Bernie logo and the Bernie branding, or you can get it in sterile. Um, so that's nice to see that they give you the option of that. Uh, overall, though, I think it looks pretty good. I think the loom on it is actually pretty good as well. So I'm going to pop up a loom shot. Here you can see it against a couple other watches in the collection. It's not going to hang on with the dive watches, but that's kind of to be expected. But I will say that the loom is really good. It's BGW9, so it has that nice ice blue color. It kind of lasts uh, all night long, uh, at least in the important parts. So uh, overall, I am pretty satisfied with the with the loom on this thing, especially for a watch at this price. I can't think of a better watch at $50 when it comes to the loom. All right, so let's talk about the movement in this thing. And the movement is perfectly acceptable in this price range. You've got a very nice Japanese Miyota 2S60 quartz movement. It is uh, plus or minus 20 seconds per month and 10 years of battery life. If you, if you see the picture over here, you can see this is the back of the 
the watch that they show and it is just one big giant battery cell so really cool you're not gonna have to change the battery in this thing for a very long time uh, i've had no issues with it it's operated by this three o'clock push pull crown again no issues with it at all uh, it does heck um the you know feeling through the crown is perfectly acceptable i see no issues with that and depressing it it doesn't jump the minute hand or anything so uh really happy with the movement in this i think they chose a good one for it all right, so let's talk about the strap and the bracelet. We'll get to the strap first. So the strap is pretty nice. It's a nylon strap, really cool blue color. I like this color a lot. I think it looks really good. You have matching titanium hardware, which is nice. I think the, the strap is a good length. I'm able to get the extra tuck on the strap here uh, on my seven and a half inch wrist. So that, that's a good length for the strap. Um, it's very comfortable. Uh, I think the matching hardware is a bonus. I, I like it a lot. It's good. I see no issues with it. You know, the stitching is nice and clean. It's kind of got a, a little bit of a unique texture to it, a little bit of a ribbed style. I like it a lot. I'm very happy with it. It's two layers underneath the watch there. Um, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't sit funny or anything like that. No surprises to it. Um, it's a nice solid strap and this is the option I would go with, uh, but we will talk about the bracelet and why I wouldn't opt for the bracelet. So here is the bracelet setup and uh, I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks nice with the watch, um, you know, mixture of brushed and polished surfaces, pretty decent finishing. It is a titanium bracelet. You can see here the clasp is also stamped titanium, um, but the bracelet itself is just bad. Uh, folded links, hollow, just completely hollow. Um, it, it, it jangles, it flexes. The sizing system in this thing is just super, uh, just not good. If you've had one of these bracelets in the past, you kind of know what it is, but um, yeah, it's just not good. You kind of have to get a screwdriver in here and kind of pry this out. Once you get out the piece, uh, you just kind of pull that out and that is your locking mechanism. Um, set that off to the side here. And then this full piece kind of just you know, floats inside this middle link. And you can see that middle link is just completely hollow. So you just pull that out like that. So that's how you size it if you get this one. Um, took me a little while to figure it out because it's been so long since I've seen a bracelet like this. You know, we're very spoiled. And, uh, you know, watches in this price range, they at least come with, you know, split pins, if not screws. So the fact that this has, you know, this odd sizing system uh, and completely hollow links, it's just not a good feeling on wrist. It pulls my wrist hair. Um, it's just not a good bracelet. You can see here, there's almost no flex to the bracelet either, uh, which wasn't a big deal for me, uh, but it might be an issue if you have smaller wrists. So just keep that in mind. It's just not, just not a pleasant bracelet. No branding on it either. You know, for $5, it might be worth getting it because you get the strap anyway. Um, but yeah, it's just not good. Everything here is all pressure fit. Uh, just fully pressed, just a just not a not a pleasant clasp. It it worked fine, plenty of micro adjust. Um, just just not a not a great clasp. And to top it all off, you have hollow end links. Um, so yeah, you get a lot of rattle. The fitment against the case isn't great either. So overall, I would definitely uh, unless you really want that bracelet and you're okay paying five dollars for it. Um, you know, as, as maybe just an experiment. And if it works out great, if not, you, you know, you cut your loss for five bucks, but uh, I would definitely just get it on this nylon strap. I think it looks better on the strap and uh, you know, this, this bracelet just, it's not, just not good. Just I'm going to come out and say, it, it's just not a good bracelet. So uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Just get the strap. Uh, and I think you'll be happy with it. So there you go, guys. It's a lightweight titanium quartz field watch, Flieger watch, really thin, low profile. I mean, it just kind of disappears on wrist. It would be a perfect kind of beater throw around watch. Um, good loom, good movement, sapphire crystal. What else do you want in a watch that's 55 bucks? I mean, that's, uh, that's pretty good right there. I like the look of it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's great. Um, yeah, minus that bracelet. Uh, I think this is an excellent value watch and one that, you know, you'd be pretty happy with if you're in the market for something like this. So uh, if, again, if you guys are interested in this, I'll be leaving their link down below. Uh, head there, pick it up. You know, Bernie, they, they, they're great. I've got no issues with them. Uh, they always seem to do a good job with quality control. And, you know, the customer service has been pretty good for me as well. And I'm happy with the watch. Um, you're not going to get a watch with Loom this good with a 10-year battery quartz movement and a titanium case for 55 bucks. I mean, that's just almost a no-brainer. Um, yeah, I think it's really good. I think that's it for me, though.
Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.